everybody, welcome to another edition of Behind the Helmet, where we are sitting with the pullers, talking about life, talking about more than just truck and tractor pulling. I have my childhood heroes, and mm -hmm. I'm sitting in their trailer, and I feel pretty good. Dennis Goodwin, Matt Goodwin, guys, I grew up watching you guys pull at the ITPA back in the day, and I'm just beyond happy. I was happy to see you here, Matt. So, uh, how do we start this out? Dennis Goodwin, you guys, you guys still live in Farmville, or? Yes. Because my favorite thing, so George Hendrickson, the, the best yep. tractor pull yep. announcer ever. Yep. No, no offense to anybody, but the best tractor pull announcer. Dennis Goodwin on a good one. And that, those are just little things I will remember the rest of my life. The State Fair, the Iowa State Fair, I, I just, memories. I was always right before school started, guys, and different things like that. And being just a little Iowa kid on a farm with my dad, trying to keep him sane, uh, getting to go to the tractor pulls and see, you know, Magnum Force and Intimidator, and uh, just, it's awesome. Dennis, can we just start with how it all started with you? Like, what got you into tractor pulling? Because you own, you own an insurance business, right? Yes. Okay. So how does an insurance guy get in? Because I always thought only farmers tractor pull. Well, I was born and raised on a farm, and I never got the farm completely out of me. Okay. We just uh, couldn't afford it and sold out when I was in uh, high school, okay. senior. We got started with the uh, micro minis. Really? The little... 049 and 051 motors in them and TDs. We switched those around and everything. And then I. Well, how old were you when you started doing the micro minis then? Well, how old you? You started one of them. I don't know. I was in probably junior high. No, no, in the basement. I know. Maybe I was younger than that. Oh, I think because you ran upstairs because you didn't. Yeah. I, it was, I don't know when it was. Then, I, then we got into antiques. What? Do uh, you remember what models? Yeah, I had two G's, one styled and one unstyled. Okay. John we had a, Deere's. And we had a Super C and we had a B John Deere. So in some ways, and I'm not a big antique guy, what do they mean styled and unstyled? What does well, that mean? the different years. Oh, one, okay. One had the sheet metal and the other one just was the open front. And the radiator left. Okay. Once you just see the cast iron radiator, those are unstyled. Unstyled. When they put the grill around the front, styled. Nice. But that's how we got started. And then um, I went out to Pennsylvania and bought the Super Happy Hooker. A super happy hooker. <laughs> 460. 460. Okay. On alcohol. Worse. Didn't run. Had pop, bang. Oh, it didn't have any. Didn't have enough spark. That's what it was. Okay. That's before they did everything. Approximately, what year did you buy the super happy hooker? 83? 82? I don't know, Matt. I'm not sure. That's okay. That's what I'm just I, don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you I want to put a timeline together <clears> if you can. And then. That commercial break was brought to you by a mini rod puller. Right? <laughs> yes. Right. The whole idea of the interview is for us to hear it. So we're talking about the 460 Super Happy Hooker, trying to develop a timeline. I think in early 80s, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, how do you like before? It's before the internet. How did you know about a tractor for sale? Another commercial break brought to you by a mini rod. So, anyways, we're back to Dennis and Matt Goodwin. I'm behind the helmet, just getting to know our fellow pullers and, and my childhood heroes. We're talking about the first kind of big tractor that Dennis bought back in the day, the Super Happy Hooker out of Pennsylvania. And the question I had was, before the internet, and how did you know there was a tractor for sale in Pennsylvania for a guy in Iowa? Well, because I got the NTPA puller magazine. It was in the back. Of they the had it for sale. That's right. It was in the back of the magazine. I still have a uh, lots and lots of their puller magazines. Okay. But that's where you used to be able to find stuff for sale, and I. Uh, what did you What did you pay for that? Do you remember? Oh, forty five hundred. Yep, forty five hundred dollars. Yep. It was. That's and was that like, was that considered a super stock tractor though? Yeah, it was a light super. Okay. Single oh. turbo alcohol. Yep. About twenty or thirty points on it. So you brought it back to Iowa, and were you like? Did you read? Were you like president of ITB already, nope, Dennis? Nope, just, nope. just pullers, right? Just pullers. Okay. I, went to North, I went to Northeast Iowa okay. first, and then I got hooked up with uh, Headley, Chickory, and Hornish. Those are all modified uh, pullers, right? Yep. Okay. Went to Iowa and ran a few. Ran a Grand National at Des Moines and broke it in two. Oh, that's right. This is the four component chassis. So this yeah. is the 460. This is the 460. So, okay, gotcha. Pulling into the seven, and it, we should have known better, but it's. <laughs> nah, you're pullers. We got free tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Paid an entry fee and got tickets. I like it. Uh, <clears throat> and then I kept watching, and one of my friends um, found it in the Polar Magazine, 
LD Nation had a private farm for sale. Okay. So, long story short, I called him up and was talking to him, and he told me what he wanted. I told him what I'd give, and he just never acknowledged me. He just kept right on talking. He just, just like there was nothing going on. And I uh, talked to him a couple times. I was either going to buy a new Buick Riviera or I was going to buy a tractor, is what I was going to do. And we went down and looked at it. Okay. And I said that I would take it. And then he went to a poll that weekend at one both days, Saturday and Sunday. So they decided they wasn't going to sell it. Okay. So I come home and he was all upset with me that I didn't buy it. Right. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but um, I went to. Um, where did we go? Colorado. Yeah, and I come back, and he's all excited. He said, LD called, LD called, called him back again. So I called him back, and he said, uh, I'll sell it to you for um, what we agreed on. Okay. And I said, well, there's only one problem. The season's over now, and I my semi's in the shed. I don't have any insurance on it. You'll have to deliver it. Well, he hung up on me. Well, the next day he calls me up. He says, all right, I'll deliver it. I said, well, don't bring it if there's any snow or ice. He brought it in the worst ice storm. They brought it. So this is the Pride of the Farm. Pride of the that Farm. That was a 10, right? Nine. Nine. Nine, nine sixty. Okay, trying to remember. It's been a while. Brought it. No, everybody in town went down to the shed. Everybody come down. And well, it wasn't an enclosed trailer that they brought it in, so right. everybody's seen it. Yeah, it was on a low boy. Yep. And it is snow and ice. Oh yeah, they, they saw it coming around the corner in the farmer's bill and the trailer was sliding sideways. <laughs> and we get it in the shed and everybody's down there. We might have had a few pops. And we didn't know how to start it. I never started a diesel in my life. So how many chargers was it at that time? Three. Okay. And so would that have been two stage? Like one smaller? No. Nope. No, no. Three stage, left hand power. So boom. Oh, the left hand power days. So how do you remember how big the turbos were on that? Oh yeah. Like a three by three? Well, I, I don't know number. Well, I don't know the number. Okay. T08 on the bottom, but yeah. So was Hyper big then, or what did you guys do? Really, yeah. So Hyper. I called. I called okay. before, but he and that wouldn't be. He told me he wouldn't sell it. I called Hyper and told him that I wouldn't. I'd like to have him build me a, a tractor. He talked and he said, "Are you sure you can afford that?" I said, "Well, I don't know. You have to give me a price." <laughs> Uh, you better try to find somebody. He said he told me about LD. He said again, he told me about the one in New York, the the one in Illinois, and they all were. I couldn't get them, so that's what it cut through. So we, I told LD, well, I'm only going to give you so many dollars then until the first of the year because I can't use it. Right. And so we went to Indy Super Bowl. And ran into him, and he bought John Shaw's tractor. Okay, what was that called? I don't remember. It was a mod. There was a three engine. So that's what got that's what got him into the mods. Yeah. Because I only know I didn't know he bought LD's tractor. I I only know LD as a mod boy. Yeah. So no, he I bought LD's tractor. He said, uh, I bought this tractor. I need cash. And he said, uh, if you give me this many dollars, that's what I go for. And how many dollars was it? I know. I know. Okay. How dollars was it? Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand dollars. And that was that was a bad I was going to give him. I was giving him twenty five. Still, that's amazing. If I can't buy a home. In the first year, I got it. Long story short, we had an ejection line leaking. So I called Jerry Lagarde and I told him I needed some warning work. And he said, I don't do warning work. And who are you? And we're that's talking awesome. again. And I said, Well, you just keep the thing, and I don't want it. I said, I'll braise it back together. You can't do that, I'm sending you one. We argued back and forth, pretty soon here it comes, hundred dollars. Welcome back to Behind the Helmet with Dennis Goodwin, Matt Goodwin. We, so we got LD Nation's diesel soup. Did he call it Pride of the Farm, or did you name it? Yes, right? no, it was Pride. So it was Pride of the Farm. It was owned by Don Cook. Okay, I know that. Uh, Bennett, Bennett, Baraska had it. There's another one in there. Oh, yeah, actually, Wykowski and LDs. No, the other one. Like uh, Joe? Joe. Joe. Okay. They had Bigfoot and, and I think they might have switched tractors. They switched tractors in there someplace. Okay. But no, that, that first year. You said you went to so first time you drove was in Louisville. First time I ever drove it. So first time you ever drove a big diesel super. First time I ever drove 
made a test of. Was Louisville at the time still Louisville, or was the Super Bowl no, the big no, dog? No. Super Bowl was probably okay. Louisville was a big dog. Louisville still a big dog? Okay. So this is 84, 85, possibly? Okay. We're back with Dennis and Matt. There's a mini rod checking its timing or something like that, but I want you to hear this, because this is good stuff. So Dennis gets to drive his diesel super, the private farm he bought from LD Nation the first time in Louisville, so mid-80s. First time I ever drove it, I went out, I didn't know what I was doing, I didn't know what gear to put it in, <laughs> and there with Blade Grapes said, just a minute. And that's Stan and Steve's dad. He right, said, okay. here, I can tell you what gear he ran, and, how many weights and he, he said, I'll front. tell you how many weights he had on the front. And he gets, we get done, and he goes, well, I ain't telling you anything anymore. He said, <laughs> but. Now, was that 7,500 back then? 95. 95. 95. It was 95. For heavy class, okay. But I, I did a, I did an exhibition in the afternoon just to, because I didn't even know anything about it. Well, oh, they had smoke tubes on them then, right? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Ugliest smoke tube there is. I still have it. Do you really? Yep. We're going to have to get a picture of that, man. You know, it's up in the garage. Time. You know where it's at. I know it's at. Text but, me that picture. But uh, I went down through there, and nobody come close to me, and nobody come close, and here comes Billy Joe Miles, and he said, Dennis, you're going to win a coat, and he's going to put it on me, and about the, that time, the last tractor, Tom, was Tom Foley, Foley, okay. went, and he goes, no, nope, you're not going to get the jacket tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you thought you had your jacket. Actually, there was a pull-off that night, and I didn't know who Tom Foley was. I didn't know, but he asked Foley. me what year we ran. No, no, that's that a different one. No. That's, that's the, the black one. Good giant? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. If you told good giant. Okay. Don't told him what gear. Told that. him what gear. Yeah, I told him what gear. I was running. I said, don't be telling him he went beat us that night. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be true. But then the next year, they just told me, well, you're automatically into Louisville. So they called me up. They said, aren't you coming? I said, you told me it's automatic. They, well, you got to send an application in. They said, well, this is how green we were. Yeah. So I said, we'll be there. I want it the next It's year. fun to hear, I mean, because I look at you guys as legend, it's fun to hear these early stories, and it's fun for people watching this too, that the struggles that everybody gets into, you know. Yeah, Matt, Matt, the family all went the first year. Uh, you didn't go the second year, and I won it. Yep, that's awesome. I've never won that down there. Well, a couple seconds, two or three seconds. I don't know how many times I have. I know we swept it one year. I don't know what year that was. So that been what pole tractors? No, no, no. he wanted to go qualifying. I, 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 oh, okay. But that's that's how we got started with it. And she was a good it was a good tractor. So that's a trip. I remember the private farm. He got um, to drive it a couple times. And I pulled pull. it once at eleven thousand. Okay. I pulled eleven thousand once. Slowest gear it had, but I never went on track. So how old are you now? Fifty four. No, no, I'm just trying to put the gear. I'm forty six. So I would have been ten. That is Hey, we're back. The mini rod continues to test a jewel, we will call it. There you go. Dennis Goodwin, Matt Goodwin. So we started out with the super happy hooker, the 460. Dennis bought Pride of the Farm for LD Nation. We're getting one Louisville the second year, got second the first year. Now we're talking about Matt starting to drive the Pride of the Farm. Matt's eight years older than me, so I would have been 10. That makes about sense. Was there an age limit, Dennis, for you have to be 16 or 18? Yep. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Well, every dad, old. every dad says that. I said, uh, yeah, yeah, he's old enough. <laughs> yeah, I know. I hear that all the time. So, <laughs> so first time you drove Pride of the Farm, do you remember where? It was in Nebraska. I don't remember what town it was. Okay. And this is this all NTPA or ITPA? ITPA. Okay. Like when you say Greeley, Colorado, would that have been NTPA? NTPA. Yeah, yeah. NTPA. So it was NTPA was literally nationwide, right? Yep. Is yep. it Houston, Astrodome, all that stuff? Right. Right. Okay. Awesome. So somewhere in Nebraska the first time? Somewhere in Nebraska. Yep. Do you remember it? Yeah, um, I think I got second, but uh, yeah, it was a rush. I, I drove the 460 once or twice, so okay. had a feeling for what it was, but still nothing like that. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, so Pride of the Farm, so when did, so oh, quick story, uh, one of my favorite stickers on your guys' old trailer when you had pull tractors, you guys came to Cedar Rapids one night, and there was a sticker on your trailer that says, we don't tractor pull to make friends, we bring our own. That right. I, I just, Similar to it. No, but it's funny the stuff you remember. Like, I still remember Matt Goodwin, you know, uh, George Hendrickson saying, Dennis Goodwin and Matt Goodwin on a good one. Well, back in the day, we'd run two classes. So, uh, so two so, tractors, two classes, we've got to throw 2,000 pounds, we've got to put fuel so in. So 75 and 95, right? Yes. Okay. Had to put fuel in, water in, air the tires. So we had to bring friends wow. to help do that stuff. So <laughs> then... <laughs> the guy that showed me the Polar Magazine, that showed me the Pride of the Farm with LD Nation, he wanted to get in with us, so we okay. built built a tractor. We bought a tractor out of Wisconsin that was a piece of junk. 
fit it. Basically a chassis. Yeah. And those two drove it then. Okay. Yeah. But it was a super. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So he was still in a nine only, and if they had the eleven, but mainly nine. And then we, this was a lighter tractor, so I drove it in the seven and his buddy. So there was a seven and a nine and eleven. Yeah. Yes. Diesel super. Or it was yeah. all diesel back then. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. Awesome. Yep. And I, I think that was 1988. We put that together. Okay. And it was just a twin charger. Hypermax setup. Nice. Hypermax, the, the rear end, I always knew the tractor had that, that little line, and you always knew it was a hyper rear and the red one. Right. And the red one. All right, so when did Magnum Force come in, and that was yours. So when did Private Farm go away and Magnum Force and Intimidator? How, how, how do we get to today? I bought a chassis, a, a frame. Okay. From George Wapolo. Atlas Tractor. Atlas Tractor. Okay. And this is still all ag chassis, right? Yep. Yeah, so we'll make sure we talk about like when the components kind of came in. And then we uh, we convert. I went down to the seven, the seventy-five, and we changed the sheet metal in. Yeah, yeah like the sheet metal went away from the sixty-six. We changed it to Magnum Force. Okay. And any does that name have any meaning, Dennis? Or no, no, just no. cool name. Right, our Magnum uh, tractor. Those side shields are hanging in the shop. I want a picture of that. Too. Yep, that'd be neat. I mean, if you look real close, you can still see the NTPA number, the original number that it was. Oh, it's on there. And Don Cook's name, you know, it over. So, like, how many tractors were in your class, like, at an average oh. back then? 20? Could yeah. easily be, especially a national event. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because there, there was no pro stock then. It was just diesel scooter, yep. right? Yep. 7, 9, 11. Yep. There 5. There was a 5. There was a 5. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. So like Brabex, is this the same time Brabex run, yes. running hard? Yep. Yep. Um, who are some of like the big names that John the Blue, John Red Baron, uh, Robs, Robs, yeah. Robs, very good earning. Warren. I actually have a farmer's implement sticker on uh, on my tractor Do you? now because just because of Warren. I, I called Warren last year, did an interview with them and stuff. And Lyle Wheatley. Yep. Uh, Coleman. Coleman Wheatley. No, no, no. no. Lyle that's was from Pocahontas. Coleman was from Ohio. Yeah, a lot of D21s, I remember. Yeah. No, that's early 80s, isn't it? Well, like, we well, had. Uh, uh, What's his name? Dwayne Proctor. Yep. The small frog. I'm trying to remember all the names. That small was, frog. That was, was John Deere. That was. Uh, he was on by Sioux City. Who was the guy that George always talked about? The guy who just parked the tractor out back in the snow, and then he, he knew where it was by that. I swear, George would tell a story about where the smokestack was. I don't remember. It was, it was, was it Proctor, maybe? I don't know. I don't remember that story. It could have been. There was one that was just kind of rough, and then you know. It well, just, who was the who was the other D twenty one that? Arlen. Arlen, no, Arlen Jensen. Arlen Jensen. There's Arlen. another one that the old boy, the, the daughter, granddaughter drove it. Oh, RC Matt. RC Matt. Yeah. Okay. It was a good runner. Yeah. 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 That's. So he sold. And Leo Ward, of course. Leo, Leo was running hard that out of Missouri. Yep. yep. David Anderson bought that tractor. Yep. And David still has it. I think his, his daughter's drove. I think she drove with the state fair last year. So you sold Pride of the Farm, or did you? I. You turn it into the Magnum Force. I turned it into Magnum Force. Okay. And I sold to Missouri some young guys wanting to start a super farm. And they took they got the frames and the rail and, and all the, the chrome grill. They got the grill, didn't they? Red got that. Oh well they got the we built Michael Rhodes. Michael Rhodes red. They got the on the top where it had the chrome on the top and the yep. step and the, all that stuff that was chromed on it. Nice. And I'd re chromed and they got all that stuff in the rear end. So when did the intent, so we had Magnum Force. We actually built that 3688 in 88. 88, Which okay. was called in against all odds. Okay, I remember that, briefly. And then when we went So you got that out of Wisconsin? You remember who you bought that from? It was on an auction. Was it? But it was just a roller, basically? Uh, yeah, it was supposed to run everything, but yeah. yeah. It was on an auction. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know what year we went to the Magnum Hoods, yeah. but that's when it changed from the against all odds to the Intimidator. Yeah. Yeah. And it was still an ag chassis. When we went to the MXs, we put components together. That's what the. Yep. Wayne Schroeder built your chassis. Yep. Engler built this one. Yeah. Can we? Then there's some of the other guys that used to go with us all the time got hooked on it. So we bought Bob Chickering's mod. You did? Yeah, we had the partner. There was three, four, four of us. The inch pitcher? Yes. Oh, and the trailer, God. and the weights, every, yep. just every swinging. An extra motor. <laughs> and we called it clueless because we knew nothing about an ounce. We knew nothing, we knew nothing about, about diesels. So like, what the hell? Let's go mod. And these guys, 
These guys were clueless. They were driving to that. Two buddies, two of our buddies drove. How long that go on? Three years. I was going to say five, but I don't know. It went to Germany. Okay. It was an Allison, right? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah. awesome. That's I never did drive it. I didn't either. Um, how many, how many, did you guys, did you guys run some Grand National? Or did you ever just more like, region? Never. I mean, we IT went back to Tomo when we first got the tractor. Okay. Uh, we would go there. We really was a Grand, not, not, that might have been just a regional, really. But was ITP the Iowa tractor puller? That was part of the NTP at the time, right? Yeah, as a member so, yes. Okay, so it's kind of like a Badger State is the PPL now, right? Would I? Okay. Yeah, because when I bought the private farm, George Hendrickson thanked me because he said that way I don't have to build something to, to beat Ernie and them. He, he wanted a red one to win. Yeah. Because he'd always say, oh, this kills me. <laughs> right. So I said, well, you want to sponsor it? No, that didn't go over very well. <laughs> it just laughs. Hendrickson had the money, too. He but, oh, yeah. But then that's... Uh, that's the second the second year I think I become president of Outlaw. Okay. Uh, in ITBA. Okay. And when did so when did Doug, did Doug start the Outlaws or did you start the Outlaws? Doug, Doug, Doug did. Doug, Doug did. And when who was the one that had PPL was going around trying to give money to everybody? Forrest Lucas. No, before that. Oh, ATP. Chastain. Yeah. The ATP. Chastain. ATP. And he was trying to and they all thought that was the best deal and I said, well, I'll do that. You did to pay any for it. Yep. And they said, well, what do you think we ought to do? And I said, the only person that's never promised me anything that said he would give us support of vehicles is Doug Roberts. And my secretary just had a fit that we could be called the Outlaws. I love it. It's great for marketing. She did I love those it. commercials. The Outlaws are coming. I mean, I've heard those state fair yeah. commercials for years. But some of our promoters, we gave because they, we brought in a new, they didn't have any diesels. Okay. And... They didn't have hardly any tractors. They had mods and pickups. Okay. And that so the outlaws, it, Doug already had the outlaws. Correct. So he was looking to kind of marry up with some pieces. Yeah. Okay. And, we, and it worked well. Our, our Iowa poles would bring in, you know, the Texas, the Oklahoma yeah. guys. I mean, oh, yeah. We, we, we would never pull that So Lake Graves has been doing the ITPA and some of that? No. They didn't. They, they come a couple, mainly yeah. State Fair before they go to Bowling Green or something. Yeah, everybody yeah. wanted to go to State Fair. It was one of the worst tracks. Yeah, yeah, everybody wants to be at the Iowa State Fair, but the track is... Yeah, it's that old racetrack. I tried as hard as I could. It's got that calcium chloride in it. You can't. But no, that was not a horsepower track. <laughs> no. But they would, we brought in different vehicles and places like it, and they would just flock them in because you'd see, well, here's the Texas boys coming in, and you'd see all these rigs. Yep. And they, we always parked them right up front by the gate. So oh, yeah. Could, Show off a little bit. Yep. What year did we go from open trailers to start sticking them in enclosed trailers? You guys remember? Like, who was the first one to do an enclosed trailer? Do you have any, remember any memories of that? I've never even thought about it. As a kid, I was always, that was always neat. You know, you pass a truck, pull a tractor or a truck, and I know. you know, just glue your head The fact the that up. now it's in a trailer, you don't yeah. know what it is. You don't know if there's a race car in there or a, right. a truck. I don't know. I don't know where we got ours. What year did I get the butt out? I was in college, so early 90s. What the dog should have bought this truck to? Well, you know, it's a two pieces. It yep. had a pedal hook. Yep. It was both cargo. There's one. That's why I remember. That's when you had the sticker that says we don't track or pull to make friends. We bring our own. Yeah. So the whole one, Fourth of July, we lost the trailer <sighs> in the void. The pedal come unhooked. Oh my. On the man. interstate. But moving. Uh, moving. Uh, we got lost, yeah, and I looked in the mirror and I said, Dead. Yeah. And. Other words, oh my God, yeah, we no. lost the trailer. It he slipped. said, no, we didn't. I'm like, we lost the effing trailer. trailer. <laughs> then we jumped out, jumped out of it, didn't pull the air on it. It just kept rolling. It, exactly. it, it ran out, right out of it quit itself. But there was an on-ramp on 235 in Des Moines. Right there. That's where the trailer Merle landed, Hay. on that on-ramp. Merle Hay. And that's that that bad happened. There was a Decker truck behind us. We, he was all worked up because he seen sparks. He, there was jacks on the front and back of that trailer. Yeah. He jacked it up. We backed up, hooked it up, and pulled out. Well, the airlines were screwed up. We just went yeah. to a truck stop. Yeah, we, we just went to a truck stop and got it off the road. The tractors were fine. They were fine. Wow. Very lucky. Very yeah. lucky. Very lucky. Very lucky. Uh, resume, biggest win of all time. Biggest, most memorable one for you? Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. That's awesome. Did they have the big crowds back then, too? Like they oh, had to it was sell out. You know, people say to me, Pulling's dying. I'm like, no, it's not. So it's. I just said there's. There was a time when when the fair was in town. That's it. There was nothing else to do. And you went to the tractor pull. And now there's 30 things. You're know, like, we're here yeah, in Hutchinson. Yeah. 
and there's a freaking music, country music, freaking I shouldn't say that, but there's a music festival 30 miles away. There's just so much to pull. You know, we live right. in such a society now, all these different things to do. I mean, pulling's still strong, you know, but we're starting to, you know, it, it's, it thins it out. Everybody's seeing it. You know what I mean? But they get sick of it totally. I don't know. So, so you pull a Guinea Super Pole? No. 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 Okay. So I went there. I watched times. that tractor. Probably the farm, LD couldn't figure out, put the weight on the front or the back. So we put it on the front, he put it on the back, and he just took it, threw it off the side. <laughs> and when he got done, he said, well, that was a mistake. <laughs> That's crazy. It's just, it's a different world. Yeah, yeah. I went, went, I used to go to the Indian Super Bowl all the time. Yeah, I, I've seen pictures of it, just packed. I couldn't, I mean, the amount yeah. of people, it's insane. The Houston Astrodome, um, I think Detroit oh, yeah. also. Detroit, uh, the Silver Dome had a big Silver Dome. Yep. Yep. Matt, biggest memory? Biggest pull? Yeah. Got to be Bowling Green. Yeah. Um, didn't really, was having trouble with the tractor. I drove it out of bounds the night before. Uh, actually would put a different blow by tube on it. It was blowing oil on the rotor. So I was on a brake, but it wouldn't stop. It took me out of bounds. So we figured that out that next morning. And uh, we told, it was second hook. It was in the afternoon. With my tractor. With his tractor. And uh, he said, I don't know if there's two passes left in that thing because I've blown a bunch of oil out too and took it out the gate three something. It was not It was past 310, I believe, because it was going to be an automatic pull-off, yeah. but nobody else made it up, so we lucked well, out. Well, they talked Bon and Larry. I said, I don't think there's another pass in there. If you want to start it, that's up to you. But Larry said, ah, we'll let her go. Just we'll get her run. Luckily, you got nobody else made it up that afternoon. Who helped you the most over the years? Like, as a mentor or just advice, fellow puller? Oh, all the pullers, all the friends. Probably uh, Jeff at Hypermax. And yeah. Jeff's a good guy. He, I don't know the Hypermax Linergy, so. Jerry owns it. Jerry, is Jeff the son? No. 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 So Jeff works there? Jeff's yeah. his right hand okay. man. He's the one that. Chris, Jerry Legato owns it, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. And we've got this buddy at home who can read something in a book and remember it. And uh, it's just very sharp. So he's he helped us put the first motor together. And yep. Just I didn't even know how to set it, set the pump. You know, he just showed us how to do all that stuff too. Dave Olson's his name. He, he's a great help in the beginning for sure. That's awesome. But in our area, we're only 18 miles away from Payton. That's where Ballard's are, right? Yeah, and that's where uh, he he started using up. We started using his sled in Iowa and everything. Okay. To get him going too. So that's how he got started with ITPA then as yep. well. Okay. Yep. Yeah, because I don't. I we got. I got to do a sled history show sometime. Kind of Lukey was big back in the day. Yep. From yep. Wisconsin. Yep. Downhill. Yep. You know, Jimmy run around without a shirt on. So you know, we got. We've interviewed uh, Jimmy Lukey, his son, on a couple more shows before. Because I I do, used to do a lot with the Badger State guys. That's where I live. So neat. Sure. Uh, yeah, well, this is cool, guys. Thank you for doing it. I just want to thank you personally for childhood memories. And it's so cool to see you now and it's to be here at the same pool with you. It, it's, a, it's a blessing. I love it. I love it. So, Yeah, it's a blast. We still love it. still enjoy getting out and seeing everybody. And The only thing is, he didn't talk to me for two weeks when I sold mine. <laughs> you were mad? That was part of the family. You don't yeah. sell that thing. Well, the Magnum Force. The Magnum Force was gone. Yeah. That used to be where it went. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Gaten. I don't know. I mean, I think he pulled it that first couple years. Yeah. And, and that was it. I don't remember. He never broke it the first year at all until he got the second year. I don't know what happened for sure. I think he's got like five or six super. Oh, I know it. Yeah. yeah. I told him how much I wanted it. All of a sudden, one morning, they get up and there's somebody, there's a truck sitting out there. There's somebody walking around trying to get in my sheds. He just come and got it. Yeah. Which is how I'd buy something, too, I guess. Yeah. No, I agree. My wife said, who's that? And I said, the dumbest son to get you ever met your wife. You gotta edit that part. No, no it's all good. You got to edit it. It's all good. She I goes, said, we want to be politically correct here. He said, no, we don't. No, we don't. This is my show. He brings in the, he brings in this bag, and I said, I told you, Cage. He's over there, and I told Buck we'd start counting. He come over and goes, what's going on? What's? He said, if you want to see it leave, you better come over. And I'm like, oh, God. Oh, okay. Do you have any brothers or sisters? Two sisters. Okay. I, did they come to the polls? Not very much. Yeah. Maybe. You, I just remember you and your dad. I don't remember anybody else really being with you. I was just a kid. You know what I mean? Just going to the polls. So. Oh, it's definitely brought us together. I think. Oh no, I mean, my dad's something still, to talk about all the time. Still, know? my best friend. My dad is. My wife will say, "You talk to your dad lately?" And our, our first conversation, "Hey, how's the tractor?" We're talking about. Oh, and then he'll say, "How's work? How's your kids?" 
I go, you're, they're your grandkids, Dad. So <laughs> it's kind of fun. But yep, no, exactly. Grace, your best friend. I, uh, so Mom and Dad got divorced when I was in seventh grade, eighth grade. I don't remember exactly. And then Mom moved us to Wisconsin, and then Dad bought that D21. Probably, I think for eight grand. It was like a really? pro farm tractor, and uh, it was called Blackjack. Yeah, I know. And uh, and I, you're my one of my dads. He wanted to come to the state fair. Yep. And you let him. And we had we had a rule that you had to pull so many poles before, and I said, Ah, oh, come on down, you can pull. Yep. And uh, that tractor just kept it kept us together. And uh, just the, the, honestly, the time we just you know that was that was every other weekend because we we're in Wisconsin. I went down every weekend during the summer to go pulling with them. I never I never really got to work on the tractor. That's why I'm so mechanically dumb now. I have to pay somebody to work on the tractor, but I was there to make sure it looked good. This is before aluminum wheels. Matt, I mean, it was just the old, the old black jack. It had 20.8s on it when he first bought it. And uh, I got to drive at Cedar Rapids, first time ever before roll cages, and I about tipped it over. They were teasing me, him and RJ, about putting an L and R on the brakes so I know which way to go. And then he said, you're not, I'm not coming to my funeral. Those are your exact words. You're not going to my kid's funeral. You're building a farm stock. So we found an 856, and I pulled it with ECI and the 8 mile an hour, or 8 or 10 mile an hour class, um, and then I sold it to Tony McMullen, he's got it now, it's called Bad Influence, so like a 466 loaded pre, still got the black hood on it, stuff like that. So then I started helping Dad with his, and then, then I kind of got going my own, but it just, the time in that truck, you guys, and the time back, those, those, are, my, those are my fondest memories, just talking, and before my dad would fall asleep, just sitting still, he, could, he would talk to me, you know, so right. it's all good, right? So. I can't thank you enough for your time beyond behind the helmet. Dennis Goodwin, Matt Goodwin, my childhood heroes. Good luck tonight, sir. We'll name it. Thank you. Dennis, good to see you. Appreciate your thank time. You. Thank you, guys.